Welcome back to our PySpark tutorial series. In this video, we'll explore how to create a Spark session in PySpark. Let's get started. Creating a Spark session in PySpark is straightforward. We begin by importing the necessary module, in this case, the Spark session class from the PySpark.sql module. Next, we use the builder pattern to create an instance of Spark session. The builder object allows us to set various configuration options for the session. Optionally, we can set an application name using the app name function. This name will be displayed in the Spark UI, providing a meaningful identifier for your Spark application. For example, my Spark application. Additionally, we can chain other configuration options using the config function. This allows you to specify the master URL, set properties, add packages, or any other relevant configuration specific to your application. For example, we can set the executor memory to 2 GB and the number of shuffle partitions to 4. Finally, we call the git or create function on the builder object to obtain a Spark session instance. If an existing Spark session is available, it will be returned. Otherwise, a new one will be created. Once the Spark session is created, you can use it to perform various operations. This includes reading and writing data, executing SQL queries, and leveraging the powerful data frame and dataset APIs. For instance, let's check the Spark session object itself. The Spark version, app name, and Spark UI have been printed out. Let's navigate to the Spark UI. In the environment section, we can also see our Spark application name and the config we did for the Spark executor memory and the number of shuffle partitions. When you have finished using the Spark session and want to release the resources, it's important to call the stop function on the Spark session object. This gracefully shuts down the Spark session and frees up any associated resources. Remember, stopping the Spark session will also stop the underlying Spark context and terminate any ongoing Spark jobs or tasks. And that concludes our tutorial on creating a Spark session in PySpark. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative PySpark tutorials. Feel free to leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.